What's up guys, Matthew Costa of Costa Clicks Photography here, back at it with another video for you. Today's super exciting because I'm releasing the first ever episode of what I really hope becomes a series on this channel, Boudoir for Beginners. And today's premiere episode, episode one, we're going to be talking about equipment that you can use as a beginner boudoir photographer. So let's get right into it after the intro. And we are back after that intro. Thank you so much guys for sticking around. And right before we get into the video, I just want to remind you that if you are new here, my name is Matthew Costa of Costa Clicks. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's in one of these two corners. I'm still getting the hang of this. But I make new videos almost every week. I try my best guys, but they're all photography related, especially if you're interested in boudoir photography as that's what I specialize in. So enough waiting, enough rambling, let's get straight into it. What is the basic equipment you need for someone starting out in boudoir photography? Obviously, you're gonna need a camera. Now, nothing fancy is in order, just whatever camera you have that has an interchangeable lens system, whether it be a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you're gonna need a lens or possibly lenses. Now, you can use natural light, such as a window, however, I do recommend a speed light with a modifier, and that modifier can be either an umbrella or a softbox. Starting off, let's talk about item number one on our list, and that is the camera. Now, this doesn't have to be anything specific. Like I said, you really just want a camera so you can take the pictures. That, you know, that's kind of obvious. And again, you don't need anything. You have an EPS-C sized sensor camera. You have Micro Four Thirds, Fuji, Canon, Sony, Nikon, Panasonic. It really doesn't matter as long as it's a camera you know and that you're comfortable with, the images are going to work. They're going to be nice because really the skill comes from within. That's where the images come from. So all you need is a camera that works, is functioning, takes pictures, and has an interchangeable lens mount system. Moving on to item number two is lens or ideally lenses. Now, one of my favorite lenses for boudoir, and in fact, you can watch this video up here. It's a video I made about a year ago about what my absolute favorite lens for boudoir photography is, and that mostly hasn't changed. If you're a beginner, I recommend some sort of 50 millimeter equivalent. This is one of my absolute favorite lenses. It is the Pentax Super Tacomar uh, F1.8, it's a 55 millimeter F1.8, almost forgot for a second. This lens is gorgeous. Honestly, its sharpness competes with my other favorite lens, the Sony, I'm gonna move my head out of the way, the Sony 85 millimeter F1.8. This lens is incredible. All you really need is a lens that you're comfortable with. If you don't really understand much about focal lengths or your style, I urge you to watch the video I did that again is linked in the cards about lenses for boudoir, but basically all the rules of lens choice for portraiture apply to boudoir with one caveat, obviously a lot of times you have much more of a space constraint with boudoir photography. So if you are a beginner, like I said, go with the 50 millimeter. Pretty much every camera system has an equivalent. If you're on full frame, that's gonna be 50 millimeter. If you're on APS-C, 35 millimeter. And micro four thirds, I believe is, oh God, what's half of 50? Should be around 25 millimeter. Either way, you just want something that's called a standard lens. Every camera system will have it. Find what it is for you, and that's the best beginner lens. I personally do, however, shoot a lot of my images with an 85 millimeter lens because I love the rendering this gives me. So if I have the room, 90% of my images are shot on an 85, but I never leave the house without my 55 as well because, oh my God, it is incredible. Next thing on the list is light. Light's not an object but it is one of the most crucial aspects of any kind of photography, and that is no exception for boudoir. If anything, I'd even go as far as to say as light is of the utmost importance in boudoir as opposed to other kinds of portraiture, because every shoot's different and every person's body is different, and light will drastically change how you shoot and how the person looks. A lot of the times, you can get away with natural light. I'd honestly say, Especially if you're comfortable with natural light, you can probably get away with it. Especially if you have a shooting area where you have a large window, large environment, 
it is very helpful to have that huge soft light coming in through a window. So windows are great. If you don't have a window, I absolutely could not recommend more. Where's mine? I could not recommend one of these things more. A speed light that you can use. Now this one obviously is an on-camera flash. However, I almost always use it off-camera because on-camera flash like this, super unflattering. The light hits you in the face. It's a tiny little light source. It's very hard light. And basically what that means is the shadows are gonna be very harsh. There's not a lot of smooth fall off. Right now I'm filming this video using a giant umbrella. So, the, I mean, obviously the shadow is like here, it's pretty dark underneath my chin and my little beard, but the shadow fall off is smooth. It's not a harsh line where you just see a shadow. It gradually changes color as the light is more or less. You can see it in all the wrinkles in my shirts as well. What's great about these though, is you put them off camera, you need some way to trigger them. A lot of the Godox speed lights have built-in triggering methods. You have a camera with a built-in pop-up flash. These will all have optical slave, which is nice if you're the only one in the environment shooting, where if you're not in a public studio, you're gonna be the only one there anyway, so the optical slave is more than enough if you're just starting out. A lot of entry-level DSLRs have that pop-up flash. I have the Pocket Wizard system. I don't personally recommend it just because of the cost. The Godox system is great. This is actually a Yongnuo speed light, so I just use the cable to trigger it wirelessly. You have your light, you need a modifier. Like I said, you don't want to use the bare flash. It does have, almost every speed light will have this little diffusion, I guess, clip, not a clip. It's a little plastic thing, as well as the bounce card. So when the light comes out, it bounces off of this, and as well as it can be diffused by this plastic, which has a bit of a texture. It makes the light a little bit softer and a little bit larger, however, it's not really ideal. There are multiple things you can do with this, actually. You can bounce it against a white wall in the room, and this will fill the entire room with incredibly soft, even lighting. However, be aware that that lighting will be very flat, and you may not get a lot of contrast at all. And if you have any shadows, they'll be very, very minimal. They'll be very close in brightness to the, I guess, the mid-tone section, the rest of the image. So what I recommend is light modifiers. Let me actually go, let me go grab one for you. Okay, so we're back. I grabbed a couple light modifiers. Now this is gonna be really big and hard for you to see, but this is an umbrella. This is a shoot through umbrella. You can see it's made of this white diffusion material and it softens the light. It's what I have my video light shining through right now onto my face. I love these because they're incredibly compact. They can fold up to a really small size and yet obviously like a rain umbrella. They expand when you open them. You can kind of see here, it takes up the entire frame right now. These are nice because it's super simple. The flash shoots through it, it diffuses the light, it gives you a huge light source. However, it does also spread it because the entire umbrella catches the light. And so you do have light coming in multiple different directions, very soft, which is if you that's what you want, that's great. Portability is the key benefit to umbrellas, at least in my opinion. I do love the soft lighting they give, however they are perfect for all situations. Portability is a plus though. Now, regardless of what light modifier you're gonna use, you're probably gonna want something like this. You don't need to have one this fancy. All this is, is something that goes on a light stand. So you put your light stand there, pretend this isn't my finger, and you take your speed light and you just shove it in. And then this, you screw it down and it clamps right on there and it lets you either put an umbrella through here Right, you can poke it right through this hole, or it has what's called a Bowens mount or a type or an S mount, which is kind of popular, especially in the budget photography equipment uh, side of things. I just realized the flash isn't centered. Not that it matters for this demonstration, but this mount is pretty common. A lot of accessories you'll see on Amazon use this mount. I think this is actually either the New Air or the Godox one. I don't remember. So many different companies make this exact same plastic mount. Really doesn't matter whichever one you get. Just get the cheapest one. You get a cheap speed light, cheap little plastic mount, and a cheap little light stand, and there you go. You have a light setup that you can pretty much take anywhere. It's portable, good for portraits, especially for boudoir, because at least in my particular style, I do tend to enjoy a more softer, more romantic feel, kind of almost ethereal, if that makes sense, to my images. So an umbrella is a huge help for that. However, it's not the only option. This right here is a little 
beauty dish. I have no clue. I do not remember the diameter at all, but as you can see by my arm for comparison. Now I'm, I'm like five, four, so my arms are not very long. You can see this is not very long either. I don't know, maybe let's say 20 inches. Doesn't really matter. This is a beauty dish and softbox. So if I take off this outer diffusion layer, you see this one particularly has an inner diffusion layer, but underneath that, you can see there's a reflector. And that's because it's a beauty dish. So the light doesn't just shine through and diffuse. It bounces off of this white circle, then bounces back, filling the rest of the beauty dish or softbox with light. I like these combo ones that you can use as a traditional beauty dish or as a softbox with all the diffusion material on here. They are collapsible, however, this one is a pain in the ass, so I leave it. You probably, if you are subscribed, you've seen it in some of my older videos when I was shooting in my home studio. I had it, I just left it up. It's great because it is still very soft light, but because of the size and the shape of the output, an umbrella spreads light in all directions. This does too, but not quite as much. It is slightly more directional than an umbrella, and that goes for pretty much all soft boxes. Now the size of the light does affect the quality of the light, and so technically it is smaller than the umbrella, so it's not quite as soft, but that also means, combined with its more directional light output, that it has a, you know, it renders the scene differently, it gives you more contrast, it gives you, so the shadows will be deeper, and if that's what you're looking for, it's a great way to start or upgrade your lighting equipment and how you light your images. It's something to think about, it's very important. Okay guys, so that pretty much wraps up this video. I think we've talked about everything. We went over the camera, we went over your lenses or lens, whatever you have to start with. Uh, we talked about memory cards, but that was kind of more of a joke. And then we got into lighting, whether it be natural lighting or using a speed light with different modifiers. I hope this helps you. If it does, please be sure to drop a like down below. Let me know it helped you out. Leave a comment because I love reading the comments. I want to create a community here of people who are passionate about photography and all things creative. My name is Matthew Costa of Costa Clicks Photography. Don't forget to subscribe. Now get out there and create.